In chapter 11, we look at different ways to allocate costs to products. There's a lot of different methods we go through here, so I want to take each one step by step, give you some calculations to write down, to remember for each method, and then I'll go through some examples with you. What I want you to do is go through the book and make sure you write in your own words what this each method means to you. So find a simple way to understand what this method is doing. In the direct method, first I'm going to go through these cost allocation methods. The direct method is taking these costs directly to the product. So again, in your own words, go through, write down what that means so that you'll remember and hopefully then the equations and how to do it will stick a little bit better. So how do we allocate under the direct method? First, you're going to find a percentage to allocate. This is based on your products. So you're going to take your product one or P1 total and you're going to divide that by your all of your products total. That's just going to tell you what percentage that product makes of your total products. The second step then is to take those departmental costs and you're going to multiply it by that percentage for this product and then that's how much you'd allocate to product one. And you would do this for each product that you have. So that's the direct method. It's pretty straightforward, simple. The step method, a little bit more complex. So to understand the step method, first, it's assigning costs in order of the process. So your first thing you're going to do is find the order. And this is always going to be given to you. And then once you're Depending on how that order is established, costs will never trace back. So a service department cost, once they've been allocated, nothing can be allocated back to that original service department. Let me show you what this means in a simpler form. Sometimes it's kind of hard to explain. So let's say we have four different service departments that we're allocating costs from. And if the order goes A, B, C, D, all those costs from A are going to go to B, to C, and to D. Now, second step is to allocate costs again. But everything then, we're taking from B and going to C and to D. So as you can see, even though uh, B might have some costs that go back to A, those are not going to be allocated back to A. They can only move forward in the process. Hence the name step. Because as you can see, it's kind of forming some steps here at how we allocate those costs. So now that you have a little bit of information there as to how to how this these costs are allocated and we can find that order that's given to us, the next step is to find that allocation percentage. And then allocate the costs. And this is done in order of department costs. 
once again we'll show you an example of how to do that that one uh, is a little bit easier to follow with numbers this reciprocal method is not nearly as complex as it sounds you don't need to read the appendix we're not using any kind of algebra matrix to do this it's kind of just simple algebra and saying that one equation can fit into another one so there's one equation to know and that's your total service department cost is equal to your direct cost of this one service department plus your cost allocated. Let me show you what that means. So you're going to set up this equation for each service department. And then the next thing you're going to do is start substituting equations. solve so let me show you how that works so if we have our service department one is equal to X that's the direct cost of that service department plus a percentage that's related to service department one times an amount coming from service department two then we have our service department two, which is the direct cost coming from that service department, plus whatever percentage usually this is given or you can figure it out easily, times service department one. So now I have these two equations. I'm going to take and substitute these equations so that I only have one equation. So I'm going to take this second equation, service department 2 is equal to y plus Actually, let me write I need I need a lot more space. So let me write this down here. Service department 2 is equal to y plus this percentage that's given for service department 2 times x plus service the percentage from service department 1 times s2 now a lot of these numbers are going to be given to you for example this y you'll have the x you'll have this is given this is given so really, once you solve for S2, then you can go back and plug that back in to S1. So you're going to solve for S2 and then plug S2 into your S1 equation. Again, this is a little bit more difficult to talk through than to show, we'll go through an example of this. The next part of this chapter relates to joint costs. Again, they're giving you a couple different methods to understand how to allocate these costs. I want you to go through again in your own words, write down what they mean by this net realizable method and also an estimated net real realizable value. But let me kind of show you how to get to these points, at least simplified, and then you can read the book and kind of grab onto a little bit more of this concept. So for net realizable method, it kind of depends. If you're selling your product at split off, remember we're talking about joint costs 
So we have one product. Say we're picking um if we're picking apples here. Those are my apples. Uh this would all come to here and then we split and it makes two different products. We could sell it as is, meaning selling at split off here. And maybe that goes into two different products. We can say our quality apples versus our baking apples. So that's any of your joint costs are coming through here. We might have some other costs and other further processing that we need to do. Those would come in to here and we'll look at that as well. So if we're going to sell at split off, we can take our product one that we're going to make like our quality apples, take those sales, divide that by our total sales. And that's going to give us that percentage for your pr first product. Then we'll look at the product too, like the baking apples. Look at those sales. Divide by our total sales and get a percentage for product two. And then we're just going to take those allocated costs, which they're going to give to you and times it by the percentage for, pro for product one and then do the same thing times that percentage for product two to find the costs that are allocated. To each product. So that's simple if we sell it at that split off, which is right at this point here. If for some reason we're going to process this further, maybe we're making applesauce and apple pies, that would add additional cost to this process. And so we're going to then look to our net realize our estimated net realizable value. <clears throat> so when we're allocating joint costs in that situation, we're looking at our net realizable value method with further processing. So what we want to do is here is take our total sales. We want to subtract out those additional costs to process further to get our estimated net realizable value at split off. And then this is the amount that we're going to find the percentage. So use that estimated net realizable value to find the percentage, just like we did above here, and then go ahead and allocate those costs. The physical quantities method this, all this means is that we're going to allocate costs based on the quantity involved. So first again, find that percentage. This is based on the quantity. So that means for product one percentage, you're going to look at <coughs> the quantity for product one. divided by the total quantity. Product two percentage, you're gonna do the same thing. Look at that quantity from product two and divide by the total quantity. And 
One thing you should always make sure of in all of these problems is that your percentages always equal 100%. If they don't, we did something wrong in those calculations and you want to go back and take a, an extra look at that. The second thing again is to allocate costs based on that percentage. By applying that percentage to each product. So those are the different methods we're looking at. Some other things that we need to consider for joint cost is should we sell it as is or should we process it further? So I want you to look at those decision making, write it down in an equation that you understand, but basically what we're looking for is how are we gonna make more money? If we sell it here by just picking these apples, or if we're going to then bring it into something else, adding some further processing costs, making it into applesauce or apple pie or anything else apple you can think of. So take a look at that and I'll go through an example of that as well. There are some other terms that you do need to understand from this chapter in order for those equations to make sense. So I just put those here so you have a place to look at that. But now I want to walk through some of these examples with you. Apply some numbers to these equations and concepts and hopefully they'll make a little bit more sense. So I'm going to look at exercises 58 or 48 through 50 in your book. This first one just looks at allocating costs and we're going to go through um, allocate this second piece of this looking at um, the split off method or joint costs and then we'll go through problems looking at each of the direct method step method and reciprocal method so we're going to start here with those joint costs and kind of walk through what this looks like and how to do this so if we want, first again we're looking at this one, first one is split off at net realizable value. So let's show you how to do that one. So first thing you're going to do is pull in that value at split off, which they're giving to you. I'm just bringing those numbers down here. I'm going to drop off um, the zeros just so you can have more room for writing. So this first one was 336, second one 288, third one was 192, fourth one was 144. What I want to do is find a percentage. To get that percentage, I have to divide by the total. So I take this, I divide by 960 on all of those. And if I do all those percentages, 35%, 30%, 20%, and 15%. Again, you're gonna wanna go back, make sure that these equal 100%, otherwise something went wrong in your calculations and you're gonna wanna redo that. The next thing we're gonna do is allocate those costs. <clears throat> so if we look at the costs we need to allocate, which is right here, that 384. I'm just gonna take each of these percentages that I just did and multiply by the 384. And that's gonna give me the joint cost that I need to allocate to each of these products. So if I do the math right, and 57 600 again if you want to double check if you add up all of these numbers it should come back to the total cost to be allocated so that's just your sales at split off method that net realizable method 
let's do the same thing same problem but show you using the physical quantities method I'm going to come back up here capture some of the numbers that I need you can see here this is the number of units I produced that's what I'm going to use to calculate my percentage so I'm going to actually so that I can see that later 